Today, we're, we're going to be going over my top 10 decks in standard for March of 2023. I even have a bonus list somewhere in the middle, so stay tuned for that. So I'm going to be going over all my, my, my decks. I'll be explaining the reason why I play every single card and um, why and why you shouldn't be playing these decks. So the first up on our list is Eternatus Weezing. And I have been a very uh, critical um, person of this Eternatus deck for a while now. I did make a video on the, the channel, and as, as I have with many of these de other decks before, um, and this deck is, is interesting. Like, it got a nice placement at that Knoxville Regional Championships a, a couple weeks back, but I'm still not a, a very big fan of it because I feel like Weezing is one of the biggest like placeholders in the format where it does so much on paper, but like at, when you actually put it into the game, it doesn't do very much. And that, yes, you'll get quick scoops on ladder, you'll frustrate people. Um, it's very funny. It's not actually very competitive. And the reason why I say this is Weezing's Severe Poison Attack is only going to be doing 60 or 40 damage per turn. So your opponent, uh, despite being shut down because of that neutralizing gas ability, they still can play cards. So it's not like it's just a complete hard lock where I'm doing 100 a turn, your item locked, I'm taking two shots. No, I have plenty of time to draw back into to the game in most scenarios. It's like if I'm playing Lugia, I still can manually attach up a Lugia V while my Axis slowly dies to the, the poison. And Eternus is not always a super effective backup plan because unfortunately you do have to fill up your board with uh, V Pokemon that can easily gust it around and break your um, Weezing lock. So I don't think there's a perfect way to play Weezing. I think this is probably the best way to play it. The quad Weezing build does fall to um, not having a backup plan. And I feel like Weezing has to have a, a backup plan because just that um, we Weezing itself is it's gonna win you some games for sure, but it's not going to just hard carry you. Um, I do like the the, the boo shake in, in this list. Um, it has a great synergy with that forest seal stone to get that turn one Weezing, but it's not bogging down your deck by playing a ton of them. I do think that that four Marnies, three Judge for the hand disruption is quite nice. So I do I would never personally pick this deck myself. If you're looking for a, a disruption deck that has a solid time in, into Lost Zone box. And that Weezing can uh, keep you in just about any game. It's not going to say win you every time. Sometimes your opponent will just draw out of it. But it definitely can keep you in any game. And at number 9, we have Gujra V-Star. And this is a very interesting case because Gujra has really only had success in, in Europe. It hasn't had a lot of success in North America. But it doesn't do any one particular thing super well. 200 damage per turn is not going to overpower anything. We're just trying to outlast our opponent by taking less damage with that Rolling Iron Attack and Moisture Shard to, to fully heal things. It'll be very hard for our opponent to get through uh, two Gudras and even some, in some cases three. And I do think this deck is very good using T Temple of Sinnoh. In uh, longer games, we can sometimes win those uh, Stadium Wars, those Wars of, of, of Attrition. And if Lugi has to spend a turn just uh, bouncing our, our Stadium instead of using like an Amazing D Destruction or um, a, another powerful attack like that, like a Radiant Charizard, then we uh, will be able to last longer and hopefully win that like battle of, of tempo. Radiant Greninja is a solid attacker in this deck. Not only does it help us um, get into the deck with, with the concealed cards ability, but uh, that Moonlight Shuriken can uh, does uh, pair nicely with that Rolling Iron, like 200 plus 90 will uh, do great damage to V-Stars. One of this deck's worst matchups is Mew, so we're trying to cover that with that Dra Drapion V-Star. Uh, having a Drapion V, not playing the, the V-Star in this deck. But um, because because Mew can boss up something on our bench and then use cross switchers and then completely erase our rolling iron. So if you are struggling with that matchup, you definitely could consider putting in a second Drapion. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of Choice Belt in this deck, so we can reach those uh, evolving V Pokemon. But uh, Gudra is a solid pick. It's sort of like jockeyed with Arceus Duraludon as the best tank deck in format. But um, as of right now, I have Gudra at number nine. At number eight, we have Palkia V Star. And this is like sort of a, a Palkia deck, but we have lots of other attackers for the correct situations. This is Piper Lapine's top eight Knoxville list. And this deck is a very, tries to cast a very wide net and have a, a decent matchup into most things. But I feel like sometimes it does fall short to not having a super concrete game plan into any one thing. We have that paralysis with the Articuno to hopefully have a, a good, good time into Lugia. The Crabominable is very nice into those uh, tanky decks like Gudra and RC Steraldon. And uh, we hope to use that Ice Cube Wash Energy Package to have a um, good time into uh, Lost Zone Box. If you want to, um, you could play a Parasol because lots of Lost Zone Boxes are playing Temple of Sinnoh now, but n most of them are not playing Vacuum. So you can slap a Parasol on the Ice Cube and still be able to outlast those Lost Zone decks. And we also do have Drapion for that little help against Mew. 
Uh, Palkia still is a beat stick attacker. It's not as dominant as it once was. It, like, that's why it needs all this help. Or like we used to see three, three, four, four, three lines. Now it's just down to a two, two. We're trying to utilize that supporting cast best with the emergency jelly for that Articuno. We have Thornton if we need to reuse one of these attackers. So I'd say overall, Palki, it is a solid deck. It's definitely not the easiest one to play, as been as has been the, the nature of most Intellion decks. But I do think it is a decent one to, to pick up, and if you can play it well, its match spread is definitely um, makes it one worth exploring. At number seven, we have Pikachu Eldegoss Control, and I've been a big fan of this deck for a while now. If you've watched um, my my previous content, you know I've had this deck higher on this list before. And I still think it has a one of the best match spreads in the game, and I'm sort of perplexed to why it doesn't. Do better because like on paper i feel like it beats just about everything like you cry destruction to handle lugia and you fire destruction to, to handle mew lost in a box you have uh flying pikachu reggie's you have flying pikachu uh, vega vault's a bit tougher but we can throw miltank in their face most of the time and it's challenging rc Stroudon and gudra we have eldegoss loop yeah palki is definitely tougher but like you see th these top 10 decks that we have we are, have a good time into all these decks so i think that this deck uh probably should be higher and it might just take sander to picking up this deck again for it to to move up this list, but I just think that if I were going to Vancouver Regionals this weekend, I would 100% play this deck because as long as I know I can manage the clock, I know I, I'm gonna know when to scoop and I know I'm gonna play correctly most of the time. So I have a feeling that no matter who I'm sitting across the table from, I'm going to have a decent time in two as long as you're not playing Palkia, but that's beside the point. So um, this, if I were going to Regionals, uh, spoiler it, I'm going, to, I'm gonna make my uh, Vancouver predictions video this Friday, but I think that uh, this would be m my pick just because it has such a great matchup spread and I feel like if like we're making the best matchup spreads in the game video Which this is not of course this deck would probably be number one or number two So uh, take that with what you will my, my number seven is Pikachu control At number six we have Arceus Duraludon and Arceus Duraludon is a very simple deck We're gonna be using the Arceus V and V star in the early game to load up our Duraludon and then we hope to be between that 330 HP and that skyscraper ability that we have enough sustainability to take all six prize cards and we do hyper potions so we can last a little bit longer as well as big parasols to protect us from annoying effects like yveltal amazing rare we have uh, the course experiment as our main supporter card because we can put pokemon into the lost zone instead of this card pile in case of echoing horns and the main innovation in this list is lost city and especially in that lost zone box matchup we can put annoying uh tech attackers just straight into the lost zone so they can't re reuse them so sometimes our opponent will like want three Rayquaza Requ Amazing Rares to take all six prizes, but they only play two, so we just lost them both their Rayquazas, and they really can't get through that final Duraludon. At least that's the hope. I'm not necessarily a big Duraludon fan. It's a very simple deck, and it's uh, it, it's like none. It's a, similarly to Gudra, doesn't do any one thing amazingly. I think it is a bit better than, than Gudra just because your Mew matchup is a little better. It does not have a great Mew matchup, especially if the Mew player wins the coin flip. But if, if you can go first or get an early mustard to get that uh, VMAX down, you, you are still fine most of the time. It's just not, I never want to be facing down a Mew player. And I think if, if Lugi starts to drift away from that double vacuum list uh, to tech against Aerodactyl or Lost Zone Box, uh, Draw instantly becomes better because that uh, double parasol is going to win you into Lugi most of the time. So I don't think Draw is, is a great deck. I don't think it's. It, a bad deck it's sort of in the middle that's why it's number six at our halfway point we have vehicle aerodactyl i was very high on vehicle aerodactyl going into the knoxville regional championships i thought that it, that paralyzing bolt is just incredibly strong in the lost zone box and we do have the aerodactyl ancient star so you have a pretty solid time into a L lugia v star and then that that Drape beyond with the sky seal stone is awesome for upgrading into to mew so on paper our matchup spread is qu quite solid Vehicle can be a bit bricky sometimes it's always better on paper than it is in reality because sometimes item lock just doesn't do anything but it is uh, a very small nonetheless. I think if you can consistently pull off that turn two paralyzing bolt, or if you can win the coin flip every time against Lugia, and Lugia's not uh, attacking clone or anything like that, uh, Vehicle Aerodactyl is going to be a very strong pick. This is uh, Alex Shemansky's top eight list from Knoxville, and I feel like it's pretty spot on. I wouldn't want to be anywhere differently if I were playing Vehicle Bolt. So I don't have a whole lot else to add. I think it's a very solid pick. It's always going to be sort of a meta call thing where if Lugia's not taking for Aerodactyl, uh, include the Aerodactyl package. If Lugia is, you're not going to play it, but it does equal Aerodactyl, and it makes number five on this list. Either you, you love him or you hate him, but you can't really deny Reggie's has a pretty solid spot in the meta, and this is why we have it at, at number four, because it has a, one of the best matchup spreads in the game. We're going to be solid into Lugia, solid into Mew, Lost Zone Box, and Arceus Duraludon, um, even Palkia, Eternatus. Eternatus not really because of, uh, of Weezing, but... We have a solid matchup spread in just about anything, but our biggest weakness is ourself. And it sort of gives me vibes of Greninja back in the day where I always had a great matchup spread, but it would just break out sometimes. And that's definitely how Reggie feels. We have uh, lots of Pokemon and energies that are only great if we draw them in the right spots. 
uh, you definitely could be afraid of, of Ice Cube, uh, so you could change that Cave of Toughness into Rope or Yellhorn. I'm a bit more uh, cautious of Mirror right now, I want to have the edge in that match. Other than that, this is our standard Reggie list, and um, yeah, that's a number four uh, Reggie's. At number three, we have Lost Zone Box. I have two separate builds for this deck. The first one we're going to go over is the Amazing Road build. Uh, Nicholas Moff has been playing this one for a while, and this is his uh, top four Knoxville list. We have, of course, our Cramorant and Sableye, uh, our um, early game pressure with Cramorant and um, Sableye, who can uh, clean up knockouts that we missed early on or just uh, take out multiple Pokemon. We have Rayquaza as an awesome one-shot attacker for V-Stars, V-Maxes, and Raikou, which does uh, 120 to two Pokemon, so we can uh, take multiple prizes in those single prize mirrors. And I love the double mana feat in, in this deck, so if uh, those Lugias were sort of being cheeky with their uh colognes before and uh we're able to like gust a manaphy cologne and then uh, amazing shot for two prizes if we bench both manaphys th they can't do that we have, of course have temple of sino to tech for ice cube so this list feels very spot on i don't think i would change a single card about it um and i think that this is the best way to play lost box and if you would ask me uh, hey how should i play this deck uh, this is the one that i would recommend and our second build of Lost Box is definitely a, a more fun deck. This is the second place list from the Perth Regional Championships that does utilize the Zacian V and the Zacian V Star. I made a video on this deck yesterday, and I love this deck. I love the, how the Zacian adds that consistency boost with the Intrepid Sword, also doubles as our one-shot attacker and our way to break Ice Q. And I've always been a big fan of the, that Kyogre play, and it's very underestimated right now. I don't think m most people expect it anymore. They've like dropped the wash energy from their L Lugia decks, so we can. Uh, make those four prizes Kyogre plays late in the game. So I, um, if you want to watch a more in-depth uh, look at this deck, um, check out my video for, from yesterday. Other than that, we basically just like slapped that old uh, Lost Zone Kyogre deck. We threw the Zacian V-Star and the Zamazenta in it. I am a bit nervous about that 1-1 Cramorant uh, Sableye count. I'd really like a second Cramorant. I might cut a, I might cut that one of Capture for it now that I, I think about it. Uh, um, yeah, other than that, I really love, love this list. I, I like Echoing Horde too right now. I'm, I'm not super high on Pokestop. Like that definitely could be a tr training court. Um, if you want the little extra push from the, from the Pokestop, I don't necessarily mind it. But I do think this deck has a lot of tools right now. I don't know if it's the best way to play the deck. It's certainly a fun new one and it's a bit more consistent than most Lost Box builds that we're experienced to, at least uh, Mirage Gate ones. So uh, let me know what you think of this deck. Am I just, uh, is, am I sort of like overreacting to this result and placing it uh, too high? I do think this deck is very fun and definitely worth experimenting with. On to number two, we have Mew VMAX. This is the same Mew VMAX list that I uploaded last Monday, utilizing that Dreepy package for the Lugia matchup. I have to say, I'm a much bigger fan of Dreepy than I am Aerodactyl. It's much more consistent to pull off. It does not hinge on whether you win the coin flip. So uh, if, if you missed that video, what we try to do is Aquan Horn, a useless Pokemon onto their bench, like Manaphy or Pumpkaboo, we, or Corio on the board so that Mew doesn't do it. So that Pokemon doesn't do any damage to our, our Mew. And then we use that Dreepy's infestation attack with our Mew v Max, so it can never retreat, not doing any damage to us. We just recycle Pidgeot over and over again. So our opponent, so we never deck out and our opponent will eventually deck, deck out. So as I said, I think this is the most consistent way to tackle that Lugia matchup. We have the, the hand disruption and judge for basically most scenarios. It's you, you, your, your typical control Mew other than that Dreepy. And I think Mew um, has like one, one of the most solid uh, backup plans, if you will, um, of any deck in format. Like even if we're facing a rough matchup, sometimes judge path just win, wins you games, which is always very appealing. You see, it's sort of a, a tough deck to sequence so it's not definitely for everyone, but I think this is one of the most powerful decks in format, and that's why it's at the number two spot. And finally, at our number one spot, we have Quad Weezing. Whoops, I mean Lugia V-Star. Surprise, surprise, Lugia is still on top. Uh, the only innovation I've made is I copied down that uh, winning Bokum list, and I have to say, this is probably my, my new way to play Lugia. That Paralyzing Bolt is just, once again, so powerful into that Lost in Box matchup, and Zapdos is a nice touch because it does synergize with, with the Vika Volt, but as well as that amazing Raikou to mean that we, we can one-shot Reggie's with Raikou and have like two prize uh, play potential with the Raikou. So other than that, we have our usual suspects in the um, Lugia Archeops deck. I have, uh, the only change that I, I made to that uh, winning list is I took out the Collapse Stadium and added a, a Marnie. I'm generally not a fan of one of stadiums in, in most cases because it's difficult to find them in the exact scenario that you, you need them. I know we have Skyla, but I don't think the Collapse Stadium is bringing enough to the table to warrant that spot. That uh, Marnie spot could become third boss's orders, canceling Cologne, Vacuum, uh, the second Luminion, things like that. Uh, Lugia, as long as it's legal, it's going to be a force in the standard format. We, um, we're going to basically have a good time into no matter what we face. And there's always going to be counter decks that arise. I think Lugia has the chops to beat any of those counter decks that do come up. It's just that did you predict the right tech uh, cards for that specific tournament? So I don't I, I don't really have my, my predictions yet to what I think that counter will be at v Vancouver. 
but as of right now, I'm sticking with that Vikval packaging Lugia, but I don't know what you guys think. Anything in this video that you do not agree with, you, you do agree with, you like, uh, let me know in, in the comments down below if you enjoy this kind of stuff. I make daily Pokemon TCG content, so uh, please subscribe and like this video. It, it goes a long way and really means a, a lot to me, so uh, thank you guys for watching. I hope you have a great rest of your day, and I'll catch you next.